Hey YouTube, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by Wildcat Comms. I wanted to talk today about um, something that I commented on um, on Grunt Proof's channel a couple months ago. And if you're not subscribed to the Grunt Proof channel, I'll put a link down here in the description. So go click on that and subscribe. He's got an awesome channel. Um, but he was posting a video on a, a digital radio that he got um, that I was really, really interested in because uh, first of all, he gave it a good review. Um, it had encryption features, it had DMR features, um, and I didn't, I don't have a digital radio right now. It's something that I'm not super into, uh, but I'd like to check it out. So um, I did a little bit more research. I watched a couple other videos. I looked at some radio blogs, and um, people gave the radio really bad review. Uh, not that he gave it like a glowing review or anything, but, um, you know, they were talking about how it has a fake FCC ID and how it doesn't uh, look good when people hooked it up to some equipment on the bench and you know they were calling into question the um, uh, encryption and, and some other stuff so I replied to Grumproof's video I said hey did you check out some of these other reviews looks like you know it has all these issues and um, <laughs> like a month later or something I happened to look at his his X feed his Twitter and um, he had screenshotted my comment, and man, thank you for not putting me on blast. Um, you cut my name out. Uh, thank you for not putting me on blast on on your Twitter feed. Um, but he he put captioned the the screenshot. Who cares? And I thought, okay, well, um, there's a couple ways to look at that. If you don't really have a budget for radios, right? If you can just spend whatever you want on radios, and you're buying radios all the time, or if you're um, reviewing them and getting them for free or whatever, then yeah, who cares? It doesn't matter if, you know, the radio sucks, right? Like, as long as it's as good as a Beofang and you have money for it, like, who cares, right? You know, if you don't have to depend on it, like, who gives a shit? Um, but if you are on a budget and, you know, you, you need to count on the radio to perform for, you know, whatever your anticipated uses are, um, yeah, then maybe, maybe it matters. You know, maybe... You don't want to buy a radio that has suspect parts and you know whatever other kind of problems or if you feel like you're gonna need the encryption that you can't count on it or something and so um, you know yeah I guess there's two ways to look at it but um, you know I, I think most of us are you know not in a position where we can just buy tons of radios all the time um, and so you know I think it makes sense to look at a lot of different reviews when you're buying a radio um, I think in a lot of cases, right, things are too good to be true. They usually are when they seem that way. So, um, you know, buyer beware, man. And if you're on a budget, um, you know, maybe you should stick to some tried and true analog radios because I think, you know, most people are going to be using analog radios and most people, um, can do most things with your average analog radio, whether it's a handheld or a mobile unit. And some of the mobile units, you know, they're not really that expensive. You can get a good 50 watt radio for a couple hundred dollars and you start adding features like crossband repeat um, and, you know, having some, some better internals on the radio, some more sensitive components on the radio. Like, yeah, you know, now you're going to have, um, something that you can count on that is a good use of your money, right? You know, you could spend that $250 on getting set up with something that's rock solid versus, you know, a handheld that has what you hope to be fancy features, but is really too good to be true. So buyer beware. I think the, the real thing here to think about is um, keep it simple, man. Keep it simple. You know, all these people running around with bail fangs, like we want to talk to them at some point, you know, we're going to want to talk to them. Um, and if you're of the mindset where like, Hey, you know, we don't want to talk to them or we don't want to be heard by them. How can we prevent that? Um, you know, that's not the hardest thing in the world. You're going to be using data bursts. Um, you know, obviously you're going to be, uh, encoding your, your transmissions, even if you're just speaking in code or, you know, something as dumb as using Morse code. We've talked about that before, right? Though there's a lot of ways, um, you know, directional antennas, low power, a million things we could talk about on how, you know, we can keep our analog signal from being heard or understood by people we don't want to. You know, adding DMR to the mix or adding a digital um, radio with encryption to the mix could be a solution for some people. Um, but uh, there's ways around it. Um, and if you're on a budget, 
think about um, sticking with a tried and true solution rather than something fancy that might not work. So appreciate you stopping by the channel. Buyer beware. Uh, as always, we appreciate you. I'm working on some fun videos um, about digital, uh, excuse me, data modes and uh, a website that I saw where some guys are getting really into the equipment, um, prepping it, tearing it down, modifying it. We're going to talk about the value in doing that um, and what we can do to bring ourselves up to speed uh, so that we can send data bursts in the field uh, very easily with some equipment that we can get for under a couple hundred bucks all told. So until then, like I said, appreciate you checking out Wildcat Comps. Thanks for stopping by the channel.